And the journey starts with one step. Yes. The first step. Okay? That's okay. We're, we're, we're here to help you. More importantly, God is here to help you. Yes. We're in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to begin reading in verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned or traveled in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles, which are tents, with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Isaac is his son, Jacob is his grandson. Okay? For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. And we want to use this, and with the help of the Lord, and some of you may know where this title comes from. If you don't, we'll explain to, to you in the message as we go on later. Okay? But I want to preach a message entitled, Put One Foot in Front of the Other. Mm -hmm. Let's look to the Lord. We're going to ask his blessing upon the ministering of his word and some folks that are sick that we want to pray for tonight. Yes. Reverend Coker, sir, will you pray, please? Loving Father, we come before you in that wonderful name of Jesus. We thank you again for this time of worship. We pray that you'll help Pastor Polk and uh, let a fresh unction rest upon him as he preaches your word. Yes. Father, we pray for Brother Collins that you'll touch, give him a touch in his body, Lord, and help him and, and heal him, Lord. We pray for Sally, that you'll touch her and be with her, Lord. We also pray for Sonia, that you'll touch her and meet her need. We also pray for Diane, Lord, that you'll help raise her up and, and give her the strength to be able to come to church. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Jim called me, or texted me, excuse me. There's a difference. Before service, and said, uh, we're not going to make it tonight. My wife is sick. And um, I think the doctor actually even texted me and said that even her daughter's sick too. So I was wondering who Sonia is. That's her, that's her daughter. She's come to visit us. And she'll be coming again. Okay? Yes. See her pretty soon. We got to go out with them on Monday. We had a good time. And the daughter was all, and she got to join us. We're thankful for God's love for all people. Amen. Okay, so continue to pray for them. And then Brother Collins texted me and said uh, he wasn't feeling well. So we'll keep them in prayer. It's that time of year. Yes, it is. You know, it's down in the 30s yes, last sir. night. It's cold in the morning when you get up and go to work. It's cold. So we got to deal with that kind of stuff. But that's okay. We're here. And... We're here to, to share with you okay, that we can begin to make the steps that we need, if we haven't, mm -hmm. for things to be right with us and God. And we read about Abraham. He didn't really know where he was going, but God began to direct him. Okay? And we don't have to be afraid if we don't know the steps that we need to take. Because if we want to be right with God, God's going to help us. Yes. Amen? He's going to direct us and show us the right way to go. And I would say that he's doing that. Amen. Okay? Well, Abraham experienced that in his life. God told him to leave the place that he lived. He lived in a place that was very sinful. And there was a lot of evil and a lot of wrong that was going on. They worshipped false gods. Okay? God told him to leave that place. He didn't exactly know where he would end up. But he knew that God was directing him. And there's something that, if you look at the life of Abraham, you look at his attitude of faith toward God, you see it in the Bible, he didn't look at God as one that was trying to beat him down and hold him back. And we just wanted to punish him. Now, he did have a godly reverence okay, for God. 
But we see him looking at God as one that wanted to bless him. One that wanted to have a friendship with him. And really, and we see him being called a friend of God. That's the kind of relationship that I want. Yeah, you, you know, you got friends, and thank God for good friends. I appreciate people in the church that are our friends. And we endeavor to uh, hang out with people that help us, and make us better, and make us more of a Christian. That's what we should do. Amen. And I thank God that God has put people in our lives that are trying to help us. And we all have the same desire. We want to go to heaven. Yeah. We want to make it. Okay, God is concerned, and we can help one another that way, and we can be friends one to another. Amen. 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 We can be friends one to another. Well, this man uh, had that attitude toward God, and God began to direct him to leave his past life. And I can relate to that. You can relate to that. For us to come to God, okay, and to make things right with God, one of the things that we have to do is very simple. We have to repent of our sin. And that word repent, okay, sometimes people think of that and they think of it just saying that I'm sorry. Well, we do want to be sorry for our sin. But it's more than that. Okay, It's a willingness to turn away from the things that we have done that are wrong. Okay? Yes, to no longer do those things. Okay? If a person is involved in things that are wrong, maybe somebody's involved in alcohol, drugs, and things like that. Okay, they come to God. God, I'm going to turn away from that. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm turning to you, yes, sir. and I want you to help me. i got a question. Okay, let me finish, and we'll talk uh, later, okay? okay? Let me, just hear me out. Maybe I'll answer your question. Okay. okay. It's very likely that I will. Yes. And if not, we're going to pray at the end, uh, and then we'll, we'll talk then, okay? And I'm not trying to be rude to you. Just, uh, it might get answered when I finish what I'm doing. Okay? When I finish preaching what I'm preaching. I don't want to get sidetracked and get off on a bunch of questions. Okay? And, you know, we're not saying that any of us have been perfect in the past. We've all sinned. We know that. Every one of us has sinned and done wrong. Okay? The Bible said there's none righteous, no, not one. Yeah, but if we're willing to turn to God... Turn away from that sin. Ask God for mercy and grace. God can give us mercy and grace, and he can direct us out of that past life because of what Jesus has done. We all know, I believe that we do, that Jesus died upon the cross. And I heard that when I was a young man. I didn't really know why. Okay, really, as a kid. I never really knew why Jesus died upon the cross. But finally, thank God, one day somebody explained it to me. They explain to me that Jesus is the Son of God. He is God's Son. And he came down to this earth to live a sinless, perfect life. We've all sinned, but Jesus never sinned. Okay? He not only didn't sin, but the Bible said there wasn't even anything wrong in what he said. There was no guile in his mouth. Okay? So he lived a sinless life, and he offered that life as a payment for our sin. He died on the cross to pay for my sin, for your sin, for everyone else's sin. <clears throat> for those that who, who will put their faith in what he has done, okay, and the fact that he was willing to take judgment for us. He literally, the Bible teaches us, we can go to Ephesians chapter 4, he descended into hell for you and I. But thank God on the third day he rose from the dead. Yes. He's alive. He's no longer dead. He's alive. And he's seated at the right hand of God the Father. And he sits there to be a go-between between us and God the Father. Amen. So if we will come to God because of what Jesus has done, if we will seek God for forgiveness, God will forgive. Yes. And God will begin to lead us into a new path in our life, yes. okay, with him, amen? amen, a path with him. You know, we we have a, a portion of scripture, we talked about it earlier, talks about 
uh, what is the greatest commandment? And the answer was given. We're to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength. We're to love God. Okay, but not only are we to love God, we're to love others. Now, I want to make sure that I emphasize this correctly, okay? Because I think many times people do not listen to the end of Jesus' answer. They stop at the beginning of the second part, okay? He said, love God with all of our, 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 our mind, our, our soul, our strength, our, uh, all that is in all of our heart, brother, sister. And then we are to love others. And most people stop right there. As we love ourselves. Okay? Brother and sister, God's not trying to destroy us. He's trying to help us. Amen. Now, he does want to destroy the wrong and the sin in our life. And he can if we're willing to repent of it. He can come into our heart and into our lives. And he can make us new on the inside. And help us to have... Uh, the strength and the ability to no longer do the things that we used to do that were wrong. Okay? But he wants us uh, to, to realize that we can start over with him. Now the title of the message is put one foot in front of the other. Let's go back to Abraham. God said I want you to leave that place. Do you know what Abraham had to do? He had to make that first step. Yeah. And then another one. And then another one. One step at a time, he had to begin to follow God yeah. instead of following sin and what everybody else was doing. Right. Amen. That's what we are to do, mm -hmm. is to begin to walk with God. Brother and sister, he called him to leave his own life. God calls us to leave our own life. This man had faith in God. He trusted God. If he didn't, he wouldn't have started following God. Right. He wouldn't have listened and gone out and left the, what he was used to, where he was brought up. But God uh, spoke to him, and, and, and he trusted God. You and I need to trust God. Yes, sir. Amen. We need to step out one step at a time and begin to follow the Lord. We can have faith just like Abraham did, and we can realize God wants to be my friend. And I've had people that have called me friends and done me wrong. Have you ever had that? Of course you have. We all have. Everybody has. Okay, we experience that in the world. The Lord will not do you that way. Okay, God will not do you that way. God is looking out for our good. He wants us to go to heaven more than we want to go to heaven. Amen. 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 If that wasn't true, that he wouldn't have be, been willing to give his own son to die on the cross for our sin. But he was willing. And if Jesus didn't want us to go to heaven, he wouldn't have died on the cross for us. But he did. He proved it to you and I that that's what he wants. That's what God the Father wants. We can have faith in that. We need to trust God. Okay? Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, the Bible tells us, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now listen to this, okay? For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Do we believe that there's a God? Yes. I think we can all say yes because we wouldn't be here. Amen. All right. But it doesn't stop there. He goes on. And he says, okay, he must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder. God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hey, do we yeah. understand that? I'm not going to, as we already quoted, I'm not going to seek God with half of my heart. I'm not going to seek God just partially or a little bit. I'm going to seek God with all of my heart. I'm going to love yeah. God with all of my heart, okay, with all of my soul, with all of my mind, with all of my strength. I am going to, to put God first in my life. And when we are willing to do that, God is going to reward us. God is going to bless us. And I'm not necessarily talking about material things. I'm talking about what we are really looking for. Yes. That relationship with God. Being right with God. Being on our way. On the right path. Taking the right steps with Jesus. Amen. You know, everything else is just 
added on, brother and sister. But that's the main thing. Our relationship with the Lord. Amen. And God wants to bless that. Yes. Amen. Okay. So Abraham went out. He didn't know where he was going. Okay. But, okay, he had faith. And we're not, you know, uh, being a Christian and living for God, it's not just a one-time prayer. And we come and we're going to pray after the, after this message is over with. We're going to pray and we're going to do uh, what the Bible teaches us to do. Okay, to come to God. We're going to call upon the name of the Lord. As we're learning in our Bible study, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We're going to repent of sin. We've already talked about that. We're going to have faith in God. We're going to ask God to forgive. And we're going to believe that God has forgiven. Amen. Then, so we don't have to carry our guilt out the door when we leave here. We don't have to wonder. Okay, we can have faith in the Lord. But we need to realize something. Okay? There's a lot that we need to learn, and God knows this. We have to grow. Okay? There's things that we have to, to do one step at a time. You don't just uh, pray and you're already at the finish line, but we're on the right way path now, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. We're not walking alone. We're not running alone. We're, we're running and walking with Jesus. Yeah. We're headed toward the goal, brother and sister. Now we're going in the right direction, and one step at a time, let's keep walking that way, okay? You know, you're, you're not going to understand everything, and you're not always going to see everything. Jesus said to Thomas in John chapter 2 and verse 29, he said, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believe, okay? I don't have to see it all. I trust God. Yes. I don't have to understand everything uh, all at one time. I understand it's a growing process, but I trust God. Let me start at the beginning. Let me take that first step, and then let me uh, continue on following the Lord. So Abraham journeyed. He traveled in the physical land of promise, and he, as we read to you, lived in tents with his son and his grandson. Okay, the heirs with him of the promise. Yes, he endured some hardships. Okay, we're not telling you that things are always going to be easy. Okay, Jesus said in the world you shall have tribulation. But what else did he say? He said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. When we're traveling through this life, there are going to be times that we face hardship. But we can't get our eyes on the problems and the hardships. We've got to keep them on the promises of God. We've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Yes. Keep looking to him. Yes. Are you here? You know, I saw something the other day, and we, we read about it in the Bible. I think I may have mentioned it to you already, but it was a it was a Jewish man that's in the Israeli army, and he got some time to go home on leave, just a couple of days, and he had to go back to the war. Okay, but he went home, and he walked in the door, and he had his uniform on, and his little son was over there with a the mother, and the little baby boy came running to the dad with his arms up. And he said, Abba, Abba. And I just, I was like, oh my goodness. We read about it in the Bible. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to run to him with our arms open and his arms are open to us. And to cry, Abba, Father, Abba. And he will pick us up. And he will comfort us. Brother and sister, that's, that's what God wants to do. Okay? We got to take that first step. Yes, there are times, brother and sister, that there are hardships. But we're not looking at the hardships. We've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. We've got to keep our eyes on going to heaven, brother and sister. Listen to what the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 12. Beginning in verse 1, and I'm not far from closing. I'll be closing here in just a moment. Whoever's going to play, you want to get, get ready to come, think about what you're going to sing, what you're going to pray, okay? He says, wherefore seeing, Hebrews chapter 12, beginning in verse 1, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, okay? And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. He's telling us, keep looking at Jesus. Lay aside those things, those sins. Lay aside those things. You ever try to run and you were carrying something heavy? Or maybe it was some ankle weights? It's hard. Yeah. But let's lay aside the sin. Let it go. Let's let those weights go. And running's going to be a lot easier. Yes. Keep looking at Jesus. Okay? Just as Abraham did, brother and sister. He looked to the Lord. Okay? Now, let me give you where my title came from. We were talking the other day okay, about... Uh, these Christmas programs where we go for like Snoopy and, and Charlie Brown Christmas. And I like that one too because they quote scripture out of Luke in there. I hope they didn't cut that out. Okay, I haven't seen it in decades, but I hope they didn't cut that out. I remember a little kid watching the Peanuts Christmas special and Deanne, they would quote uh, scripture. Okay, but I also remember one. I like. I used to like those. They call them claymation. They look like little clay figures, but they animated and and uh, things like that. And I'm not trying to be silly. Just bear with me. I'm going somewhere with this. Well, there's one called Santa Claus is coming to town, and they got a a bad guy on there named the I guess his name is the Winter Warlock. He's all mean. He's all he's all uh, evil looking and got pointy teeth and a big pointy nose and ah. and he's just just uh, an old uh, curmudgeon, and, uh -huh. uh, and he he meets up with Chris Kringle, and and uh, he's he's looking in the mirror, and he's like, I wish I could change, but I I just can't change. And he does, I don't like what I see in the mirror. When I look in the mirror, I don't I don't like what I see. And and uh, Chris Kringle keeps starts telling him, all you got to do is put one foot in front of the other. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. you put one foot in front of the other. Okay. And soon you'll be walking across the floor. You put one foot in front of the other, and soon you'll be walking through the door. And then the, the winter warlock, he responds to them, and he said, You mean if I want to change the reflection that I see in the mirror each morn, it's just my election to vote for a chance to be reborn? Wow. He's saying... If I want to change, it's my choice. Mm -hmm. I don't have to stay the way that I am. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a silly Christmas cartoon or whatever, but the message is what's there. Yes. Okay? If you want to change, make that first step. It's your choice. Yes. You can be reborn. Yes. You don't have to stay the way that you've always been. Right. Amen. That is the hope of the gospel. Jesus didn't leave us the way that we were. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. You want to know how to get to heaven? <laughs> Repent of your sin. Let God forgive you. Open your heart to him. Let him come in. Yes, yes. And you will start walking a different way. Amen. 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 You can be reborn, my friend. You can be a new creature in Christ. It's up to us. We've talked about election. God chose the way that he did things. And God gave us a choice. All right. I have decided to follow, follow Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 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 One step at a time. Tonight as we bow our heads and we close our eyes in reverence to the Lord, she begins to play and sing. We're going to come and pray here at the front. We want to invite you to come. We will pray with you. You may not know what to pray, but we'll pray with you. And God will hear your prayer. He will wash away all of your sin. He will forgive you. You open your heart to him, he will come in. Let us come tonight. As we pray.